Mark Cashman here, Senior Product Manager at Microsoft, sneaking into the SyncUp feed to share a recent relevant episode we produced for the IntraZone podcast called Add to OneDrive. Originally, we got a tweet request to help provide guidance on the what to use when between the existing shared library sync and the new method of adding to OneDrive, which is a smart redirect that puts content closer to you, expands access across all your devices and improves overall performance getting to and working with your files and folders. In the episode, we talked to Gaia Carini, who is a principal group product manager, and Katie Erlinson, who is a senior product manager, both from the OneDrive engineering team, and they collectively gave a great detailed answer to that what to use question. I've no doubt that you will enjoy and benefit from their OneDrive wisdom. And with that, here is the Add to OneDrive episode in its IntraZone entirety. Welcome to the IntraZone, a show about the Microsoft 365 Intelligent Intranet. I'm Mark Cashman, Senior Product Manager on the Microsoft 365 Marketing Team. And on today's episode, we hear from Gaia Carini, Principal Group Product Manager, and Katie Erlinson, Senior Product Manager, both from the OneDrive Engineering Team, here to dig in to distinguish the value between Add to OneDrive, the feature, and general sync of team site document libraries. There's a lot that you can do and there's some best practices. And just so you know, document libraries in this case are sometimes referred to as shared libraries, those that you share with your team or in a shared space. Effectively, outside of your OneDrive, your own personal work OneDrive, but you want to bring in all of those files and folders, even if they're shared. So you're going to hear about each of these capabilities, the add to OneDrive and the common notion of sync, and the path forward by design to make it easier for you and pervasive. You'll hear guidance today and going forward, plus a few favorite tips and tricks direct from the team that designs the overall user experience of OneDrive. And the whole of this episode kicked off by request from our audience on a unique platform discussion. And we will share that as we kick off the episode with Gaia and Katie. Just a fun way where we heard some great feedback that turned into a great episode. So I just have a few thoughts to share when you actually think about the Add to OneDrive feature. It's really easy. You just locate the folder that you want to add to your OneDrive. Select the circle of the folder's tile so that you can take an action on it. And then select Add Shortcut to My Files, effectively Add to OneDrive at the top of the menu. Or you just right click a folder and select that same notion, Add Shortcut to My Files. So this is a feature that I use, the Add to OneDrive, for all of the files of this podcast. Really, forever, for wherever I am in my OneDrive, most commonly at my desk here at home, uh, I go into the Windows Explorer. I find the Mark-Microsoft OneDrive icon. I click into the Documents-The IntraZone folder, and there it is. Even though this comes from a document library, in a SharePoint site that's connected to a Teams team that we use to help manage this podcast. It's really just a one or two click away action for me to get to those show uh, notes and the folders and all of the things that we do per each episode across the various Microsoft Teams channels, effectively a folder in a document library. I have access to all of that no matter where I look across OneDrive. Once I've added it to OneDrive, created that shortcut from my common My Files experience, and it takes me to wherever those files are located without moving them, but it's a great reference with some really ease of access. So I do this for the IntraZone. I do it for the Microsoft List product management that I help manage here at Microsoft. And of course, with various conferences, some of which are managed by other people, which I think is one of the best possible uh, use cases where somebody else is managing files and folders. And I go in and I add those that are most relevant to me during that event to my OneDrive by just clicking on their folders and files and add to my OneDrive. I have access so I can do that. And then I will have access more directly without having to navigate to that site or that team. It's just right there in Windows Explorer, same experience, document slash name of event. Even if it's managed by somebody else who's invited me into that team, 
and then we all work on a variety of files, but then I have access to all of that with fewer clicks and more in my own domain. So I know which files are mine and which files are coming from a shared location. That's a little bit of how it works, how I use it. Uh, I think the best thing though is to get clarity of what we're really here to answer, which is how do I distinguish that add to OneDrive feature with team site sync when I'm using OneDrive? And no better people to help answer that than from the product team. So let's bring in Gaia and Katie to address this and much more. All right, it is enough of you hearing Chris and I speculating what this OneDrive sync and all the things that you can do uh, in this modern era of files experiences everywhere. We are here talking with Gaia and Katie from the OneDrive team, joining us on the Interzone. Gaia and Katie, welcome. Thanks, Mark. We're excited to be here. And I'm excited that you're here. Before we get into the why we're here, which might be obvious to everybody, but we have a really particular reason that's kind of a fun uh, reason of the way this episode came about. But if you don't mind, uh, both of you sharing just a little bit about what you do on the OneDrive team. And of course, there's if there's more that you do here at Microsoft, people would love to know a little bit more about you. So I thought, Katie, we would start with you. I am a PM on the OneDrive Sync team. I've been working primarily on our enterprise features the last few years um, and add to OneDrive being one of them. So I'm happy to be here today and talk more about that. Very nice. And Gaia. Hi, everyone. I'm Gaia. I am the group product manager of the OneDrive Sync team. So my team, including Katie, works on OneDrive for Windows and Mac OS across consumer and commercial users and scenarios. And yeah, I've been working on Sync for several years now, and I love being on the OneDrive team, and it's been really fun. What I thought was fun about this episode, I know you both know, but for our audience, you should know that the impetus of this episode truly came from our audience in the broadest way. There was a Twitter discussion that was going on, and the focus of that was, when do I use the Add to OneDrive feature versus Sync? And of course, you can imagine uh, somebody out there uh, was thinking about who they should pull into this conversation. And we now have Gaia and Katie, who are about as close to the source of answering that question, which we will address it in the exact way that you would imagine the OneDrive team is the accurate way. You know, when you first saw that Twitter discussion, there was that tweet thread. A, I was really happy that you said yes to joining us on the Interzone to provide the answer. Is that a common thing that you see people asking or is there trying to navigate some of the feature sets and capabilities of OneDrive? Yeah, it is a question that we have been getting. And so I was looking forward to us coming here on the Interzone to talk more about the two different ways to sync files from either shared libraries in uh, SharePoint or just a folder someone has shared with you and from their OneDrive um, or files from Teams. Since it is a common question, we're really excited to go more into the differences and what our recommendations are and what we see the long-term plan to be. So where do we start? We come off this thread and we start to stare at, you know, what is a great way to answer that? Which I know you you both have some nice thoughts around that. And I thought, again, Gaia, just to start with you, let's set some ground foundational elements of when we talk about sync, maybe at the team site level, you know, what is that? Syncing the team site and then answering in that same vein of thought, what is add to OneDrive? So first, starting with just OneDrive sync, uh, as the app, OneDrive Sync lets you access and edit and share files from Windows and Mac OS, no matter where they are, in your own OneDrive, in someone else's OneDrive, or in a Teams site, uh, you know, or in, you know, from a channel in Teams, including if you're offline. And to sync the files that are in those shared locations, we have two models that are supported, the sync button and add to OneDrive. And so first I thought I'd just share what are um, some of the differences between those. So the sync button is something we've had since we've started supporting with the new sync client. When we were on our journey to replace Groove, um, we added the sync button and that syncs 
the folder or library to that specific device. And so let's say I'm here on my Windows PC and I go to, you know, our team, the folder where our team saves all of our specs, I can click the sync button and that'll sync it to this PC specifically. Um, but then if I go on my Mac, I won't see that same folder. Um, and that's where Add to OneDrive comes in. Add to OneDrive allows you to add that folder, let's say in this case a spec folder that's really important and I go to all the time, to your OneDrive so that it's easy to find no matter which device you're on. And it'll start syncing you know, on that device where you added it to your OneDrive, but across all your devices too. So now if I go back to my Mac, I'll see that same folder also being synced, but I'll also see it on my mobile device through the OneDrive mobile app or on Teams if I go navigate my OneDrive files through Teams and on the web and in Office. And so it just allows you to easily find your files uh, in those shared locations. So I've used the Add to OneDrive feature and I, I've done it four or five times consistently with the right use case, at least for me, is when I go into my Windows machine, any Windows machine, and I get into my OneDrive and I see those shared folders that I've added to my OneDrive, it's the quickest way for me to get to them. And it also is the kind of uh, spaces that I work in pretty much throughout the year. I have one uh, add to OneDrive from my next gen events site. So any event that I work on, I can get into the folder of the individual event see the sessions, uh, PowerPoints, any videos, and you know some of the pre-material that we have for people to use for like graphics to tweet out and stuff like that. And I also have another one that I used for Microsoft Lists with the List team. Uh, it's a place where we create a lot of different outbound presentations. We also manage you know the different feature sets that are upcoming. But from a content and document perspective, I just go into my Windows Explorer, click on OneDrive, and then go right into the name of that team, which is either Microsoft Lists or Next Gen Events. And it's just right there. And it's it's really easy to navigate. I know it's there. And it just, like you said, doesn't matter which machine I'm on. So I, I really do love that feature. And I think it's really important to people understand how to leverage that in the different scenarios, which I thought, Katie, if we could get some of that insight from you, you know, whether you're thinking about sync or add to OneDrive or what we know kind of into the future, what, what we'll get to is what do you recommend and why when you when you think about different uh, ways that you would guide people to use the technology? Yeah, so we definitely recommend add to OneDrive. It is the the newer shiny feature um, from Team Site Sync. As Gaia mentioned, it's kind of the more holistic OneDrive experience. So you're not just getting it on whichever device you chose to sync it on, but you're getting that content across all of your devices. Um, and it's also more more performant. I'm not sure um, how many people realize this, but with Team Site Sync, we're actually also syncing all of the metadata for the whole library. Even if you go and you only sync at the subfolder level, like in Gaia's case, at the spec folder. Um, and add to OneDrive, if you go and you add the shortcut right at the spec folder level, then we're only syncing that content. So for really, really big document libraries, this can actually be a pretty big game changer. Yeah, to add to what Katie was saying, uh, with Add to OneDrive, we've also made several improvements to the experience where, for example, if you decide you know, you're done with a certain project and you no longer need that folder, and so you remove the shortcut from your OneDrive, We'll go and clean that up from the device, uh, which I know is feedback we get from the sync button experience. Um, so we've made improvements like that to the experience. We also have a group policy that allows removing um, the shortcut content if users no longer have access, for example, to the content. So we've been continuing to improve on the experience based on feedback, uh, in addition to all the advantages Katie mentioned. Maybe Katie, back to you, you, uh, you know, thoughts around guidance. If I'm IT and I'm thinking Microsoft is describing, you know, these different ways that I can configure for my employees, my end user, um, what would be some of the things that we might guide them to consider, if not even pass along to their end user? If you know that no one in your company right now is using TeamSite Sync, we recommend just guiding everybody to only using Add to OneDrive. 
in our documentation, there's a script where you can actually turn off the sync button for your whole site. And so if you know that that no one in your in your organization is using Team Site Sync, I would just go ahead and turn that off now and start taking advantage of, of all the things Add to OneDrive has to offer. If you are in a mixed state, I would definitely stay tuned for our guidance here. Uh, we will be migrating users off of Team Site Sync and into, onto Add to OneDrive eventually. But first, we really want to make sure that we're addressing feedback and that we can make sure that the migration will be seamless. So definitely stay tuned here, but know that that's where we're heading. Uh, so one thing that I've been just curious about hearing you talk about the administrative capability to turn off the sync button in the team site from the to the team site level. Does that same uh, sync button disappearing experience actually happen also in Microsoft Teams? If I'm in the files tab, which effectively is that same, same connected SharePoint document library, does the sync button also disappear in Teams? Yeah, so it'll also go away um, in Teams. It's a setting that removes the button for the whole tenant. So, so yeah, Teams will be included in that. But the add shortcut to OneDrive option that we've been talking about is already available in Teams. And so if you go to the Files tab and there's, you know, in the general channel or whichever channel, a folder that you want to make sure you're syncing, you can still use the add shortcut to OneDrive button from Teams. Yeah, that's great because I think a lot of people kind of ask a broader question, you know, when I'm working in SharePoint versus working in Teams, files being the the what they're talking about. It's the sometimes that delta of experience. I know the team is broadly working on, you know, having the capabilities be the same. And I think from a sync perspective, it's really important that if you, from an admin perspective, choose to remove the sync button by guidance of, you know, using the add to OneDrive more as we go into the future, I think a lot of that is kind of comfort food for admins to go, okay, I changed it once, and that will be adhered to these different entry points that people might be making those choices. Which kind of leads me into where I at least wanted to pick your brain. The Twitter topic was more around what we've been talking about, the sync and add to OneDrive, how they work together, and maybe you know a little bit more guidance on what, what to use when. If we were to step back and just ask the OneDrive team, whether it's a sync question or broader than that, what is the long-term plan? You know, where would you tell people the, the direction that we're going, either in this space or even broader than that? Guy, I thought we'd start with you. As Katie mentioned, the long-term plan is to really use the add shortcut to OneDrive or add to OneDrive functionality uh, to allow users to sync their files across all devices and access them really easily, uh, no matter where they are. As part of that, we have been talking to a lot of customers and we have heard feedback on some of the uh, gaps in the experiences or some of the, you know, just feedback from users interacting with Add to OneDrive and comparing it to this, the way the sync button syncs files. And so we're really focused on really understanding all of that feedback and addressing that. We also, in addition to that, need to work on making the migration from the sync button synced content to add to OneDrive really seamless, both on Windows and Mac. And so that's another thing that we've been uh, looking at and planning. Eventually, the goal is to fully replace the sync button. And so Stay tuned for more information and timelines on that. We don't have timelines on it right now. Again, the, the current focus is really addressing the feedback so we can really make the Add to OneDrive experience the best possible one for users across different scenarios. Anything from a, a robust service like OneDrive, especially one that's been in use at scale, and managing our customers, especially you know for giving IT the tools that they need, and obviously the awareness, change management of what's coming, or best practices and guidance. I, I certainly think it's a great investment area. I know, you know, knowing a lot of change and if it affects our customers negatively because it's a bigger impact or something they didn't see coming. Uh, and this one sounds like it's you know a perfect way to both blend getting users to think about doing things a little bit differently and that impact not being something that is unmanageable by IT uh, when we make that change. So Katie, it, it, you know, there's probably a lot of feedback that's coming in. What would you say is the number one or top 
uh, piece of feedback that we're actually working to address. The thing we hear the most probably is this concept of like confusion around me versus we. With team sites, we kind of always said, okay, if it's in your OneDrive node, you can think of it as your personal stuff. If it's in your team site node, you can think of it as shared content, but then users can still share from their OneDrive and then it's there's a mix of shared content there. And now by adding shortcuts into OneDrive, it just adds a little bit more to that confusion. And so our primary focus is to clear that up. Um, it becomes the most problematic around deletes. So if somebody deletes a file that they think is in their OneDrive and it's just for them, and then that deletes propagated, and then now it's deleted for everybody, and then they don't find out about it till somebody else needs to work on it, and then it's missing. So that's our top priority. Um, we want to make sure that deletes are super clear. It's clear when it's being deleted for just you or it's being deleted for everyone. And we want users to confirm that before they actually do send that delete out to everybody. So that's number one. We kind of had the same feedback with Team Site Sync also. Um, it's not really a new problem to add to OneDrive, but it is definitely still there. It sounds like to me you're going to be increasing in a positive way the use and value of the recycle bin and the awareness of before you throw it away and, of course, always the awareness of if it's been thrown away, you know, the recovery and, and the, the value there value for OneDrive if it's your own set of files, certainly value if it's a shared set of files. And it's interesting, the, the me, we space, I've heard both internally working with MVPs, hearing how they discuss it. And I think the way you're describing it, Katie, a lot of it is the how does the technology work and what are the things that you know are blocking people from either understanding it or if they're using it and they hit some of these, especially like a delete scenario, how to make it so that they do delete something effectively, or if they delete it, they're aware before they maybe accidentally do it. Exactly. We want to make sure that we can prevent it if it's not what they meant to do. And when accidents do happen, we also want to invest in making that recovery be easier. Guy, did you have a, a thought? Yeah, I think you both are spot on. On the me versus we topic, I think some of the things we're looking at is really how to surface the fact that a shortcut is from a shared location in File Explorer and Finder, you know, whether that's through the icons we use um, or even where the shortcut goes by default. And so we're exploring different um, potential paths there, but we know it's, it's definitely a common theme across a lot of customers we've talked to. And so it's really top of mind for our team. Do you have, because you work on OneDrive, you most likely use it as much as I do on a daily basis. You know, if people listening to this, if there was something that is either a recent innovation or something that people, you know, might be just one or two clicks in and they should know about it, or if it's staring them in the face and, you know, we just want to increase, we know how many times people are using it. Is there any recent or relevant tip or trick of using OneDrive of just something that you actually use each and every day and, and really enjoy? Yeah, I can start. Uh, I have uh, an exciting announcement as of yesterday. Uh, we reached 100% on our uh, file backup, uh, also known as known folder move for macOS. This feature is something I use every day across both my Windows PC and my Mac basically to ensure that all of my files on my desktop and my documents folder are in OneDrive and I can access them across devices from my phone if I'm out. And so it's something we've had on Windows for a long time and we've, we're really focused on continuing to improve that experience as well. And yeah, as of yesterday, we got to 100% in production on macOS and it's been something our team has been working on for a while and Really excited about that. Well, congratulations. KFM on Mac is not a small feature uh, to, to build and deliver. Now it's up to our customers to actually take advantage of it. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to the feedback on that. That's great. Uh, Katie, any particular feature or capability that you love about OneDrive that you use? I think mine also has to be KFM. It's not something that I think about appreciating every day, but just the fact that I don't have to worry about what files are where on what device. I mean, I'm constantly working on multiple devices every day. I have three going 
most days. So the fact that they're all in sync with where my files are, I know that, you know, I can find a certain spec on my desktop every time. It's easy. I like it. You both keep saying this word spec, and I'm thinking maybe we can put all of your specs in your OneDrive for consumer, and we can share out that folder so that the world can sync all of your specs. Do you think that's a good idea? <laughs> Probably, not. <laughs> Probably um, not. I do. I do have every single file I own, both in my personal life and in my work life, in my OneDrive. Now, of course, whether that's in my personal account or my work account is really important. But yeah, I wouldn't be able to function at all without my OneDrive. Since you told us to to go beyond just synced. I'll tell you one of my other favorite features I use a ton, especially even both at work and outside of work. I love using the PDF signing feature from the mobile app. I feel like that's something that not everyone might know about, but is so, so useful. So you don't have to print something out and sign it. For folks listening, if you haven't checked that out, you definitely should. And the PDF exciting. scan. I think that's my favorite yeah. non my favorite non sync feature would be the PDF scan. Yeah, totally. PDF scan then sign both. Whether you're using them together or separate, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. I, I think I'm mentioning the same feature. I was just gonna say real quickly, my favorite feature is on the OneDrive mobile. Mm-hmm. And it's when using the expense tool. Sometimes you have a receipt that requires it to be in the system. Yeah. And I use OneDrive religiously because I typically create a folder for each event that I attend or each travel. And so I collect my PowerPoint and my videos and all the kind of the marketing stuff. But then inevitably I have a meal out and I've got my my uh, folio from the hotel and all those things. And I immediately, as soon, much sooner than later, I will go into OneDrive, navigate through, sometimes through my add to OneDrive for these next gen events folder. Then I go to the folder of the event and then I just save it. And, you know, I do a basically a scan, a document scan of the receipt. And it's very easy to give it a name, put it in the right folder, and then I'm ready to put it in the expense tool when I return. And it does a great job of cropping the receipt no matter what form this this receipt is in. And it just puts it, you know, again, kind of in the most compliant space for me, OneDrive, and then is very then easy to, to upload into that expense tool per each expense report. So... Thank you for for building off of Office Lens, but I think taking it to a level of real usability. It's very easy. I agree. Clutch feature. We don't thank the mobile team enough for that one. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, honestly, whoever did the Office Lens integration did such a nice job because what you described around PDF markup, the inking capabilities, you know, that's next level. If you haven't ever done that, it really is. There's a lot that you can accomplish and and it's not a uh, hard to use feature. It's really friendly. Uh, Well, thank you for giving us a lot to think about and to kind of answer this Twitter question in a really nice long form to learn about it and more, especially, you know, kind of the to get your head on of where the team is going and, you know, best ways to navigate through from an IT perspective for the benefit of end users. I I know that you always, uh, you and your teammates always have the customer in mind for the experience, but also for change management. It's very, very, very important. So thank you both for hopping off of Twitter and coming to the Interzone. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks so much. Now you know the difference of using the feature Add to OneDrive, what it does bringing your shared libraries closer to home within your OneDrive domain, easy access, and how it balances the ways that you might adjust syncing directly from a team site or directly from a team's team. Just add to OneDrive and then you can get all that sync goodness and more. Always great to hear direct from the product team. And of course, it's based on that feedback that you got that I want some clarity on how these things work and what they are. So I really appreciate having Gaia and Katie come in and share all of that insight, plus insights into how they design the product going forward, which I think brings a lot of value, I hope, to you in your use of OneDrive going forward. We want to thank our guests, Gaia and Katie, for being on the show and for giving us insights about the value and future of Add to OneDrive. So if you haven't ever added to OneDrive, this episode is the encouragement that you needed. It's a really great feature, and we really appreciate having Gaia and Katie on to explain it and to also give guidance 
and a little bit of a look ahead. We encourage you to check out our show page for links to all of what was discussed today and more. You can go to aka.ms slash the introzone and send us your questions, send us your feedback, whether it's to the SharePoint team or the OneDrive team or pretty much anybody here at Microsoft. I'll navigate to what it is that you're looking for as best as I can. Just email us at theintrazone at microsoft.com or find us on Twitter at SharePoint, at OneDrive, and at mcashman with a K. Remember to rate, review, and tell all your friends about the show. This really is the way that we hope to get the word even more broad to anybody that you know that you work with, friends, peers, partners, customers that would benefit from the knowledge that we aim to share through this show. We hope that you can encourage other people to follow. And of course, you can get this show where you get your other favorite tech podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. I'm your host, Mark Cashman. This has been The IntraZone, a show about the Microsoft 365 Ad to Cart Intelligent Intranet.